Now, this is from the Occultos book, and just FYI, this is copyrighted, not that I need to, would have to say that among Africans, but this is somebody else's work. Okay. And um, this is the title of the chapter in the Sankofa movement, Relationship Development Process in the Establishment of Family. So heretofore, you know, we're talking about these general characteristics, all of this. They specifically talk about forming relationships. Companionship is when it gets more serious. You're introducing families. You're trying to see, is this a possibility? If the elders approve, okay, you get the um, advice that this is a good possibility, then you start a formal courtship. Okay, now, um, and let me point out here, we know this is uh, an ideal way that it, it was done traditionally for our people. And if we're able to do that, it's a good thing. When we follow, this worked, right? So when we're able to follow the traditions, but we know in our reality, some of us are already in relationships and we've already made certain decisions by the time we ever hear about this. So it doesn't mean, as I say, we definitely didn't follow this. It doesn't mean that your relationship would not work. But this is just advice, and this is good general advice, you know, for us. But anyway, so courtship. Um, during this phase, there is joint verbal commitment to marriage and family. So both of you are making a commitment. Uh, you engage the elders and the priests for additional consultations and blessings. You do want the blessings of your family. Because you, the, what you hear about in the West, the people, people hating their in-laws, uh, if they don't approve of the marriage, uh, you're gonna have, you know, they're going to work against it instead of uh, assisting you. Okay, uh, but you know, that's an issue that we have, you know, we have to deal with. So, in some cases, in order to do, you know, your purpose, individuals may come together, but without having those things in place, you recognize, you, you know, you won't have that support from that family. But also, we can get support. Wonderful, we have an extended African family. And for just many of us who become, who follow the African way, we don't have support from our parents, our families. Some of us are lucky, but most of us don't, and we get support from each other. So, you know, this is ideally, and this is when you had the village support and the families were intact. So we make adjustments for being in this society, and I don't think for any of us in this state of oppression that we're able to follow the exact things that our ancestors did, but to the extent that we're able to, you know, we benefit from that. Sexual intimacy is discouraged. They also say living together is discouraged and is premature. And remember, this, and I mean, that's generally good advice, but um, we know this is traditionally, and we know people, um, deal with the reality that we're, we're in, but I will just point out, and especially for younger people, the reasons uh, living together is discouraged. Uh, they say it may abort, abort, kill the relationship building behaviors uh, that lead up to a properly consummated union uh, because you have an, an unambiguous and a it's not a permanent commitment. So you committed on the one, you're not really committed. Uh, it can exhaust the attractive energy of infatuation. Because, you know, they said you want to um, fall out of the clouds, get married. Because, you know, you're in the clouds. Well, then you have to come down to earth, and okay. Uh, and I think so, <laughs> people in my day, I grew up in the 70s. And think about it, in earlier times, if you were not allowed to be sexually involved until marriage, people got married much earlier. You know, they didn't, oh, I'll wait till they're, oh no, people wanted to get married. <laughs> it was an incentive. And then, if, and when I grew up, if you um, found a way to get around, because the elders were trying to, you know, keep an eyes on you, and of course, people will find a way, then, if uh, 
there was proof of that. There's a baby on the way. Shotgun wedding. <laughs> and those work too. Because, you know, okay, so you've made a commitment to by uh, have, conceiving this child. Okay, you got to. And I think probably at some point there may literally have been shotguns at the wedding. <laughs> okay. Um, living together. It lacks the, the bonding support of full community. So you don't get full community support if you're living together uh, or the spiritual and the family sanctions. Although today you may get, you know, the family may sanction that. Um, and certain members of, of the community. But you get the point in general. And again, this is recommendation if we're trying to follow our traditions. Also, this is a list. I'm still on the list of why uh, you shouldn't live together. One or both parties resist making a final firm commitment to the union. So, you know, you're committing, but you're not fully committing. And oftentimes, that's a way to... Uh, avoid making that firm commitment. And la the last point they made on that was there's little motivation to resolve interpersonal challenges. So, you know, because you're, you're living together, my sister has been real, or my brother, you know, okay. But when you're married, it's not that simple, right? You can't, okay, I didn't know you had that issue, peace out. Okay, it's a little more complicated than that. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through this list of how to sustain a relationship because this is equally important. Because, you know, people get married every day. Uh, although, some, maybe not as much in our community, unfortunately. But, um, their point, and we'll, this will come up again, but this is in that same chapter. So, um, communication. And you hear that all the time, right? Um, they make the point, know that women and men communicate differently. And that's not to say either is better or worse. We are different in how we communicate. And we need to recognize that. Women are more expressive and, and verbal. And in fact, I've heard it read that some men feel that see that as a disadvantage, that she may have the verbal advantage in the argument, and then they just won't communicate at all. But we have to, and women have to recognize, men are maybe more reluctant to talk, or they're more, more direct. We might be sweet pie, and, you know, versus more direct to the point. But that doesn't mean that they're <laughs> uncaring. He's being a man, and we sisters, we want men, right? We don't want wimps, we don't want Mr. Effeminate. We want him to be a man, and that's interesting in your relationships. You want him to be a strong warrior man, but then, you know, you would want it to, him to be able to communicate the way, but no, it doesn't work that way. That's what your sister friends are for. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, in the West, people get married, you, you know, you want your spouse to be your be all. No. You're asking too much of either of you. You're asking too much. That's why you're supposed to have all these other members of the family that you go to. Now, and your sisters, these need to be righteous sisters who are also, who love both of you and who um, want this marriage to work and they also have some experience. Because if they don't have experience in long-term marriage, even if they're trying to be helpful, they really don't necessarily have that wisdom. Okay, but constant communication. Number two, emotional connectedness. And they specify, avoid the Western self-absorption. It's all about me. Uh, or isolating yourself from your partner your compliment. Okay, number three, openness. And it's a serious statement that goes with that. Rid oneself of all secrets from your companion. Neither party, this is I think excellent advice, Neither party should engage in any thought or activity he or she would not readily share with your partner. I want to repeat that. 
neither partner should engage in any thought. Because, you know, I remember growing up in church, they said if you, um, if you commit lust in your heart, you, it's just like doing the sin. So no thoughts or activities that you can't share with your partner. So that's your gauge. Should I do it? Well, can you tell your partner <laughs> if you can't? <laughs> okay. Number four, decision making. All decisions should be a result of thorough discussion and conversation. So, you know, none of this unilateral, I'm the man, I made decision, or I'm the woman, I have spoken. No, thorough discussion. You have to come to a decision. And even if people allow you to do that, that's not going to last, and that's going, there will be resentment as a result of that. So it's not even in your best good. You may win the battle, but you're going to lose the war, unless you have a total wimp, you know, any person with any integrity, um, in a, as a couple, you can't let one person make all. Now, there may be certain areas, if it's things about the house and construction, I have to defer to him. But I even have, I have uh, ideas and questions, but in terms of if, if there's a final decision, but, uh, or anything that's not very specific to one of us having uh, more knowledge and experience, and if it's opinions, about how we need to do something other than that. We have to decide that jointly. Okay, last point. Um, resolving problems. Okay, these things they say should be consulted, and but they're given the list, but at the end of the list, you need to do it in reverse order. But I'll give, you, I'll give it to you the way they said it. Culture. So you're trying to make a decision, how, what, what is your culture's, how does that, you know, jive with your culture, um, your traditions. So if one of you is suggesting something that's totally in conflict with the traditions, okay, that, you know, should be pointed out when you're trying to resolve something. You can go to your community, and that doesn't mean you had a fight, you go put your business out on the street, not in that way. Okay, um, but there are people in the community that uh, may have expertise you can go to. Your elders, community elders, of course, we know that, and this is true elders, okay, and if it's about your relationship, not if it's about money in general, okay, you could, you know, talk to somebody who has the expertise with money, but if it's getting along, sustaining a marriage, you want to look at elders who have long-term have had long-term marriages. Um, family. Then family elders. Okay, and last on that list is your mission statement, the family mission statement. consult in reverse order. So you, before going to other people, you can start with your mission statement. Well, we agreed, you know, we're going to do this or not do this. Okay, then your elders, other members of the family, community elders, someone in the community, your culture, which uh, they included, that, mean, that might be getting a spiritual reading, you know, to get consultation. But all right, my sisters and brothers and daughters and sons, that's a wrap.